It's that time once again, the final moments before lights out of the charge down to turn one. Who will come out on top at Paul Ricard today? Well, we'll find out soon as we get the French Grand Prix underway. The circuit Paul Ricard then, a 3.6 mile track, 25 miles east of Marseille. 15 corners here, six to the left and nine to the right, with the main overtaking chance expected to be going into turn eight. Top speeds today should be around 205 miles per hour. Hello there, everyone, and welcome to France for a 100% race in Esteban Ocon's Alpine. Super keen for this one. France, Paul Ricard, it's a track that's kind of weird. I, I have a love-hate relationship with it, but I feel like when you get in the rhythm, it's actually not too bad of a track as we contemplate our strategy. I think we're going to end up being aggressive here and just going on to the three-stop strategy. The game thinking that both of them are pretty equally matched, so I guess we're going to have to wait and see if that does end up being okay, the case. Um, let's use a formation lap as an opportunity to I guess thank you for clicking on the video. Um, I hope you enjoy. Um, I do a bunch of F1 content on the channel at the moment. Ha really having a bit of fun with the game. And just uh, yeah, testing the waters. Um, now it doesn't look like everyone is going for the three-stop strategy. Certainly not Guan Yu Zhou. He's starting on the hard tire compound. And it gives me some confidence that the race will be pretty exciting. A variety of strategies on display for this particular race. Now we are starting, of course, in P20 and we'll look to fight our way up the field as much as we possibly can. The Alpine pretty strong in a straight line so we shouldn't be too bad on this track but it's certainly not one of the stronger cars in the game so it's going to be quite a challenge as we stop on the marks and it's five red lights we don't get held for too long and off we go really good initial launch we fly past Guan Yu Zhou trying to find an opening on the outside here. Ricardo leaves a very small gap, but we get squeezed out. Forced to take evasive action there on the Williams of Albon. And now we tuck behind after clattering the little marker there. Into P18 though, we'll take that. Trying to be as aggressive as possible here. The three-stop strategy requires us to absolutely shred through these tyres and try and find as much performance as we possibly can. Swinging around the outside there of Ricardo and the McLaren who's had a poor qualifying get that position confirmed We're up into P17 aggressive on the overtake here on the opening lap or two to maintain ground with the AI who are so quick in a fast line or a straight line in this year's game absolutely crazy we look down the inside for Albon we back out of that move though keep our front wing intact been an okay start as Ricardo now aggressing from behind. We keep him at bay though with overtake and Elborn now within reach. Very tricky to make an overtake work here though in the third sector. The best opportunity of course is leading into that chicane on the back straight. But we still get it done onto Elborn. Superior grip on the soft tyre compound compared to the mediums and get that done relatively easily. Two Aston Martins now up ahead in Vettel and Stroll. Bottas not too much further ahead either and the AI tend to have a lot of battles in this year's game so we'll be trying to lean into that and allowing us to find much needed ground. Max Verstappen with the fastest lap and 144 to open things up. That speed will no doubt continue as we lose fuel throughout the race. Getting very close there to Vettel now looking for a move around the outside. The AI as well breaking on apexes can be a little bit scary. We just want to try and get through these cars as quickly as we possibly can, find a bit of free air, a bit of fresh air, so that we can set some quick laps on these tyres. Good, opp good opportunity to find some overtakes there, around the outside under Vettel. Switches to the inside, leading on to the start-finish line. And pretty happy with the start so far, still some decent energy left in the battery, about 40% to work with here. And our stroll will be quite vulnerable. We have DRS now. Leading into the chicane, Stroll looks to defend the inside and just squeezes us off there. We back out of the move and instead try to make it stick around the outside. That one's certainly a lot more confident. And that's us up in to P14. Bottas half a second ahead. He's on the hard tyre compound, so 
expecting him to go for a one-stop strategy. That means that we're not really fighting with him at the moment, and we won't want to lose too much time either. You can see just how much of a pace deficit there is, as he's got nowhere near as much grip as we do. And we might be able to line him up here and get into that sort of final complex, the sweeping left-hander into that awkward right. We show the nose around the outside, and we dive it down the inside. A clean move there onto Bottas, and Norris will be up next as we edge our way closer and closer towards the top 10. The end of lap 4 now, we've managed to find that gap back. Clean air serving us well, and the cars ahead still trying to fight for some clean air of their own. Lewis Hamilton with a 137.8. And we're 137.9, so only about a tenth off the fastest lap in this Grand Prix so far. And that's giving me confidence now to keep pushing as hard as we can to continually find track position. We do get past Norris and uh, Schumacher up next now in P11. A little bit of debris there on the track, but fortunately not quite on the racing line. As we look to try now line Schumacher out trying to get a nice clean exit here onto the straight. You lose a lot of time if you have any sort of wheel spin. For the most part, it's pretty good. And we elect not to use overtake on this occasion. Just DRS. Schumacher just a little bit too far ahead as this DRS train now forms. Getting a lot of time though through the slow speed sections. And that's actually surprisingly where the Alpine did feel quite good. Still though, the straight line performance really strong as well. We tuck behind Schumacher now, heading into the final sector. His pace actually okay, so an overtake here might be a little bit tricky, but we're still keen if an opportunity arises to make something stick and then cling on to the back of our teammate in Alonso. He's currently down in P10 and doing a one-stopper himself. So alternate strategy here for the team. Be interesting to see which one of us wins out in the end. We think about a move down the inside here on Schumacher, but do back out as he defends it quite fiercely. DRS and overtake now across the start-finish line, gaining quite a bit of speed here in the slipstream, but it's just not quite enough to show the nose down the inside. So we elect to just tuck behind here, try and get a nice clean exit. Schumacher with a little bit of wheel spin, our exit superior force him to defend the inside and try and look around the outside but Schumacher with some good racecraft but it's not quite good enough and he will concede the inside leading onto the back straight and we get the move done quite cleanly. On now to a lap six and we are tagging Alonso now within three tenths a big gaggle of cars up ahead still in this DRS train and we almost want to use that as a slingshot Get us past this pack so we can maybe start having a bit of an assault on the front one runners side by side to the first couple of corners and we're going to find a lot of pace. Sonoda and Gasly fighting ahead in the Alpha Tauris. Alonso and Magnussen as well might go too wide and we just decide to back out early here. Be nice and patient but we get hit from behind not once but twice and I think that was Schumacher maybe getting some revenge for that earlier overtake and that will actually see the safety car deployed. Now we'll have a look at a replay here to see uh, exactly what happened. And yeah, Schumacher just going for a very ambitious move down the inside. He loses his front wing as a result. And look, I think I was in the right there to claim the corner. Schumacher dove very, very, very late. Anyway though, I don't think we sustained any damage as we move to now enter the pit lane and we're side by side with Ricardo. We try and make a bit of a cheeky overtake work there, but he will hold position and yeah, the track absolutely shreds the tires. So a good opportunity to get a fresh set of stops on and that's the first of three stops completed. Moving on to lap nine or the end of lap nine. And the safety car has entered the pit lane. We get an awful run, though, out of the last corner. So, unfortunately, we can't really attack Norris. Swerving to try and get some extra heat and energy into the front tyres, which can be very tricky to warm up in this game, especially under safety car conditions. Nonetheless, they will fight hard to get this gap back. Norris up next. And Le Leclerc, funnily enough, 
and P12 also close by and probably running a similar strategy to us. Signs as well as you can see just up ahead. Also down the pack but that may just be due to the strategy choice of the two Ferraris. Anyway, as lap 10 con concludes or continues rather, we're going to see three wide up ahead. Magnuson, Leclerc, Norris. Norris backs out and we're forced to back out a little bit there as well. Would have liked to gain a good run, but unfortunately we were impeded. That set our straight line against the McLaren. The speed, big deficit and we get the move done. McLaren Magnussen still going side by side and that will not go well for them heading into the third sector. We might be able to find a little bit of pace as we potentially make contact there with Leclerc. Debris flying up in the air I think from perhaps the Alpha Tauri up ahead of Gasly making contact with Sainz. Leclerc and Magnussen though still side by side and we are looking, we are searching for some sort of overtake here. Gasly does dive into the pits and we dive down the inside of Magnussen but the Haas really good through that final corner we can't make that stick on Norris around the outside. Tried to make an overtake onto us but we we're having none of that. Onto lap 11 now. Magnussen and Leclerc that gap has extended but we're still struggling to get past this Haas. Uh, Any time we lose in these battles is time that we are going to struggle to gain back later on in this Grand Prix. We finally get the move done though there onto Magnussen down the inside heading into the final corner. A nice clean convincing move and that's us up into P10. Moving on to lap 12 and the gap to Leclerc has now shortened as Albon impedes the Ferrari. I find it quite surprising that Leclerc has been stuck behind the Williams for so long. But down the straight line, he should get that overtake done. But we're keen as well. We look to make it three wide, swinging it down the inside. And that should be the move done. We just pull it up in time, keeping it within track limits. That's a really nice move, elevating us into P8. Signs now, who set the fastest lap up ahead. A one second gap to him. And we'll be pushing pretty hard using a lot of our battery and a lot of our tire life to get within DRS range and tag along with the Ferrari who again I believe is on a similar strategy to us using all those soft tyre compound sets I'm going for the free stopper we actually set the fastest lap of the race so 137.2 so our race pace quite solid as we are continuing to pursue signs onto the next lap and it's now down to 0.6 a lot of time found there on the straight as well even without overtake Alonso now in sight as well up ahead. He's in position four, looking to hold out on that hard tire compound, but it is quite slow. So we'll have to wait and see whether or not that actually does hold up in the long term of this particular race. I'm assuming at this point as well, our tires are starting to get a little bit worn. That's something we have to be very, very careful. Some of the traction zones with worn tires can be very tricky, especially through this second and third sector. Or more so the first and third sectors where it's really quite slow in some places. Long sweeping corners where you're accelerating as well. But that gap to signs, oh, it was closing but right on cue, traction becomes an issue and we lose a lot of pace there. That gap back out to over a second and now we are forced to use some overtake to get back within reach. And we do so on lap 16, Alonso Perez holding up signs. This could be an opportunity for an overtake, but we elect to just sit behind signs for the moment. Not wanting to be too aggressive. We make a little bit of contact there with his gearbox, but the front wing will be fine. Caution flown, so a car is going slow somewhere, but I think that might be behind us. We elect not to pit here, and I think the window was open. So an interesting decision from us here, not going for an undercut. Instead, just going for signs as the window actually does open now onto lap 17 and we'll just follow with us for a little bit here as we see the, the traction the drive it's really starting to drop off and it drops off very steeply in this game at times but I'm being egged on by the fact that we're staying within arms reach of signs of Alonso and that means that if we can stay with them for now our tyre life and our tyre wear later on in the race will benefit. 
They're trying to play the long game here. We are only on lap 17 of 53. Still a long, long way to go. And our pace, not too shabby at all. Out of the chicane though, you can see the AI do have a slight advantage. The amount of slipstream we are receiving though, not too bad and keeping us in touching distance. All about just trying to be nice and clean and consistent here, make no mistakes, and make a decision. If we are getting held up, don't pit. Let's keep pushing for this pace and we'll, we'll reap the benefits of that later on in the Grand Prix. We'll see whether or not we do pit here on lap 17, and that will not be the case. So we're going to stick it out for a little bit longer. I think we did pit slightly early on our first stop due to the safety car, so... Somewhat makes sense to normalize the strategy here by not pitting on to lap 18. We decide again that we will not enter the pit lane. And Alonso now might hold us up. See if perhaps there'll be some team orders to let us through because it makes more sense for the strategy. Doesn't happen on this straight though. And it doesn't look like Alonso's going to yield on the exit as well. So we're going to have to get this done the hard way. And we use overtake get him down into the right hand or so not uh, too difficult in the end we don't lose too much time still just trying to keep with signs he's having his own issues trying to get past Perez on the hards and I can't help but feel that this is compromising his strategy as well so I seriously now need to consider lap 19 is it time to pit we'll see if it is and there we go a little bit wide there on the entry, but make it work as we fire in. Did we stop in time though? I think we may have sped a little bit there in the pit lane. I guess we're going to have to wait and see if that actually was the case on exit. A 2.8 second pit stop. So good work there from the team. And we'll, we'll get confirmation in just a moment if we did speed. And unfortunately, there we have it. A five second penalty for speeding in pit lane. We'll be serving that on our third and final pit stop of the race where we do jump onto the medium tyre compound. We need to focus though, head back down, position 8, 4 second gap to Leclerc and we'll be looking to close that as quickly as possible. Bottas though actually, now next up, still on that hard tyre compound and we are gaining pretty rapidly on him. I don't know exactly when the hard tie runners will be pitting. I can only assume it will be after the halfway point of the race where they then jump on to the medium tire compound. DRS, no overtake. A little bit slow on the overtake. And Bottas looking to defend down the inside. Don't know why he would really want to be fighting here, but nonetheless, pretty eager for a battle. Fire it down the inside. Bottas still holding strong on the inside, but our outright traction should be better. And it is. So I can't really complain too much about that. Uh, anyway, we move on now to a lap 28. And we will pit once more, making sure that we actually do pit in time. Now, I got a little bit confused because I think I kept getting track limit warnings while entering the pits. And I'm fairly certain I was entering the pits the right way. And you can see that we actually did get another warning. But anyway, <laughs> we will persist. I don't believe we got a penalty from it so it is what it is it will be our final pit stop anyway jumping off this set of soft tires onto the mediums and we'll be wanting to run them to the end of the race now we are of course serving that five second penalty so the team can't work on the car for those five seconds and then a nice clean stop to send us on our way 2.6 seconds in the estimated tire life 31 laps which should well and truly see us through to the end of this Grand Prix and as we exit we will be in position 8 a 10.4 second gap now 11.3 to Leclerc and we are going to have to absolutely push as hard as we can to try and close that gap
lap 52 and the gap now down to three tenths. We have a lap and a half to try and find two positions here and get us up into P5. We have been pushing so incredibly hard and these mediums have been stretched to their absolute limits but we are still finding pace and we are still finding time. Hamilton and Leclerc continue to battle and we are eager to try and find an overtake. We look down the inside onto Hamilton. We can't make that move stick. Now onto the final lap. 53 or 53 and we are going to absolutely send it to try and find these positions because we know they're just so close. Now we used a lot of battery to find up this ground. Only 10% remaining in our pack, so that could make things very difficult. Let's need to stay within touching distance, try and get DRS down this back straight. We can make a move into the chicane if we're close enough. Just need to get good traction out of this awkward little complex. It's not too bad. The medium's screaming for grip. Hamilton and Leclerc, they pull away. Better outright traction in those cars. We are within DRS range though. We activated a long side overtake. I think we're going to be a little bit too far away though. This little DRS train proving costly. We aggress into the chicane though. Climb the curbs out wide. Looking to mount a run into the final sector. Our chances though of finding these positions beginning to dwindle. I'm still hungry though to try and catch Hamilton. A purple second sector as well. We are pushing so hard to try and find this pace. But Hamilton and Leclerc are finding pace themselves. And we're just outside of reaching distance. Hamilton with poor traction. We lose the rear end as well though. Max Verstappen crosses the line as we try to hunt Hamilton. Through the left hander. Down into fourth. We look to try and send it down the inside but we lose the rear end. And that will be us into position seven. This 100% race starting in last position. We push so hard. Leclerc sets the fastest lap of the Grand Prix right at the very end. So it was going to be such a tough ask to find those two spots. But we gave it our all. P7 still pretty good in the Alpine. And a good result for Esteban Ocon who gets driver of the day at his home Grand Prix. We've witnessed some great battles around Paul Ricard today, and they've taken a fantastic win. Natalie Pinkham, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? Well, this was a real team victory. They put together a solid strategy today that appeared well suited to the conditions out on track. The driver did everything that was expected of them in the moment to really execute the team's plan to perfection. A shining example of how F1 really is a team sport. The team at Red Bull have done a phenomenal job recently and it's clear to see that they put in the work and they should be so proud of the victory they secured here. Let's focus on the driver of the day, Natalie Pinkham. Come on, who do you pick? Let's give it to Esteban Ocon. That was a commanding performance today. Very impressive indeed. Well, what an end to another fantastic weekend of racing. Thanks to everyone who joined us, and we'll see you for the next one.